What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com back with another SketchUp 2019 tutorial for you. So in today's video, I wanna talk about the new dashed lines function inside of SketchUp. Um, so SketchUp 2019 came out yesterday and I've gotten a lot of opinions on that video over there. I welcome those opinions. I think we've had great conversation. I would ask if you have opinions about SketchUp 2019, go to that video. I will link to that up above and also in the notes down below to leave your opinion about 2019. I'd like to keep this video about actually creating a workflow where you can use the dashed lines function inside of SketchUp. Um, so let's go ahead and just jump into it. So in SketchUp 2019, the, the new highlighted feature is the ability to add dashed lines inside of SketchUp, which a lot of you know hasn't really been available up until this point. And so I wanted to walk through some different examples of some different things that you can do with that um, in order to help you kind of get up and running with the way that that works. And so the first thing to know is the way the dashed lines work is they got added as a function of the layers inside of SketchUp. So they're not in here for like individual items or something like that. You don't like pick an object and then go up and adjust like a line weight or something like that. Instead, what you do is you take objects and you put them on different layers, and then that visibility is controlled by the layer that it's on. So like for example, I have an object right here. It's just a box, so there's nothing fancy about it or anything like that. And uh, as of right now, there's nothing really going on with it other than I've placed it on the example box layer. So you can uh, select your object and then go up here and click this drop down right here in order to put it on the example box layer. Well, once you've done that, you can go down to that layer and then you can click on this option right here in order to adjust what the lines are going to look like. So you can see how as I do this, and I have to click off of it so it's not selected so you can see. But as I click through on these different dots and dashes, you can see how you can select different kinds of lines in here for anything on that example box layer. And you're gonna notice that nothing else looks like that in here because there's nothing else on that layer. But let's say for example, I was to take my uh, default model, click on it, and then click the drop down and put that on my example box layer. You can see how I get the same line styles on my default model that I'm getting over here. And so there's a couple different things that I wanted to talk about, like how you would adjust the thickness of the lines in here. So best as I can tell, the way that you would adjust the thickness of your lines in your dashes is to adjust your line weights inside of your styles. So making lines thicker is no different than it's been before. So what you would do is you'd go into the styles section of your tray, and if you don't see any of this, by the way, you can go up to Window, Default Tray, make sure Show Tray is checked, and make sure that you have options for layers as well as styles. But if you go to the Edit tab over here, and you go to the Line section or the Edges section, you can adjust the thickness of profiles in your style. So when I adjust the thickness of the profile in my style, you can see how this line weight gets a little bit thicker. So and one thing to note about that, is if you look at this right now, if I was to extrude this into 3D, right now the only lines in here that are getting thickened are the ones around the perimeter of this, so the profile of this. However, if you were to check the box for depth cue as well and adjust that, then you can see how the thickness of the lines for all of these is getting adjusted inside your style. And there's, I think, some kind of workarounds we'd probably have to do in order to get this to work properly to show different um, styles as different thicknesses. So that's some different kinds of workarounds that we can talk about a little bit later, um, probably another video. So the next thing that I would talk about and the next place my brain goes with this is how would I do this with multiple different layers inside my model. So let's say for example that I had this uh, basic flat floor plan in here and I wanted the interior wall and the exterior wall to have different styles. Well the way that I would do that is I would just come in here and I have this on my interior wall layer and so if I scroll down I can pick one style for my interior wall layer then if I click on the exterior wall layer which is the layer that my exterior wall is on then I could adjust this by going in here and selecting a different style. So you can see how by putting these on different layers, I can apply different dash styles 
to the lines in this model. And so one, one thing I've seen a couple places online is people asking why you can't adjust the colors of these. Well, you actually can, um, and it's actually a function that's been in SketchUp before. I think a lot of people maybe don't know that it's there, but that's also contained inside the styles section of your tray. And basically, if you go into the style section of your tray and you edit your current style, and you go in and you edit your edge settings, there's a button down here or a drop down down here for color. And if you click this drop down and you do color by material on your line, then you can actually come in here and you can select these edges. You can pick a color and you can actually apply that to these lines. So you can actually apply a color to your dashed lines as well. So I would do the same thing here. I would just double click and then I would shift click to deselect the face in here. And then let's say we wanted this to be like a blue line or let's pick something that isn't the selection color. So let's say we wanted this to be kind of a dark green. So if I was to come in here and I was to click on this, that would apply a dark green to this line right here. So you actually can color these up using the styles in SketchUp as well. And so the last thing I want to talk about just a little bit um, is first of all, I'm going to go back to a regular architectural design style. Um, and one thing you may want to note about this is you may want to save a style that has the settings that you want so that you can go back to it easily. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go to an architectural design style. And what I did want to talk about a little bit is how you might apply this to like a model that's going to go over in layout. And so one thing this update does not do is this does not affect the fact that you're probably going to have to export multiple different scenes and stack them in layout. And there's a few different reasons for that, um, but it's especially true if you have different things that you want to have different styles. But let's go ahead and take a look at this. So right now what I have is I have a set of walls with a door and I have a section plane turned on giving me a section cut through these walls. And so, I have these walls, I have the exterior walls on an exterior wall layout layer, and I have the interior walls on an interior wall layout layer over here in the right hand side of my screen. And I'll expand this out a little bit so you can see this. So the problem with this is you need to be able to do a section cut in order to see through this door to get the frame to show up and all of that. Well, when you do that, and I'm gonna go back up into my styles, I'm going to click on my modeling settings and I'm going to turn off section fill um, just so this isn't filling this wall in. The problem with this that I've found is if I try to put a dashed line on my exterior wall here, you can see how this does come in here and dash this line, but the line displayed as a part of your section line kind of blocks it. So if I try to do a top down view like this and I was to turn on parallel projection, you can see how the section lines from the section plane actually block the dashed lines that I've applied to that layer. And there is something you can do about this, though you can't fix it 100% unless there's something that I'm missing here. So what you can do is you can go into your style section and you can turn your section line width down to one. So if you turn your section line width down to one, then you start seeing this dashed line showing through here. Unfortunately, you can't set it to zero, so you can't hide that line completely. So I think what a lot of people are gonna end up doing is they're gonna end up going into their profiles and making those thicker because the thicker you make these lines in your profiles, the more you can see through here. Um, the more you can see your line weight kind of showing through. So I think there's gonna be a balance that people are gonna to have to do here, but unfortunately there's no way that I know of to turn these edges off that are shown as a part of the section plane. So, but if you wanted lines to be different uh, line weights, so if you wanted like, um, this to have a line weight of three and this to have a line weight of one, you would still have to create different viewports inside of SketchUp and then stack them. Um, but you can see how this is kind of a workaround at this point to make sure that you can see your dashed lines even though you have a section plane inside of SketchUp. And then from there, the workflow would be pretty much the same of just uh, taking your scene and then exporting your, your viewport to layout. So that's kind of an overview of the way the new dashed lines in SketchUp work. Um, I'm sure I forgot something, but I think I covered it pretty thoroughly. I'll leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. Um, 
can you think of a better workflow for this? This is still new and I think everybody's kind of trying to figure out how to use it. But I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.